Ah, clients, they want everything done yesterday. And these days, it's not just the deadlines we're up against. We're up against clients who think AI can do everything faster and that their nephew who knows Photoshop can do it better. Well, lucky for you, I got 10 tips that'll help you speed up your Cinema 4D workflow and make those impossible deadlines feel a little bit more possible. Now, these tips are perfect whether you're brand new to Cinema 4D or you're such an industry veteran, you know what a creative cow is. And don't skip the last tip. I'll bet you a million max on bucks that you didn't know it. Let's dive in. Now onto our first tip, Cinema 4D's Commander. Commander is the ultimate time-saving tool in cinema. If you just hit Shift-C, it'll bring it up and it will allow you to quickly search for, find, and execute tools, commands, and plugins. If you need something to jiggle, to mush, or explode, Boom, you got it. This is also useful for the Redshift Material Editor where you can just bring up the commander by simply double clicking and you can search for whatever node you need. Ah yes, Commander, it's the lazy person's best friend. Next up, selection objects. If you've ever found yourself needing to select random objects over and over again, well, a selection object can help you speed up that process by storing selections within the selection object. So how it works is you just need to select all the objects that you want to store as a selection. And then you wanna to go to Select, Selection Filter, Create Selection Object. That'll create a selection object that when you double click it, it'll automatically reselect the objects that have been assigned to it. And this is super useful when working with rig characters as it makes selecting certain controllers quick and effortless. So yes, the selection object, it'll help you stave off arthritis by removing the need to manually select objects over and over again. Now let's move on to how you can simplify animation workflows. Now I'm sure we've probably all been there when we got so many animation tracks cluttering up your dope sheet that it turns it into a not so dope sheet. I'm gonna wait, that was an awesome joke, and uh, I'm just gonna give you some time to laugh. Are you done? Now let me introduce you to bookmarks. Bookmarks allow you to isolate specific tracks and store them for easy recall, kinda like selection objects, but for animation tracks. To create one, you just need to select the objects whose animation tracks you wanna isolate in the timeline. And bonus tip, if you middle mouse click an object, it's going to select its children. So with those objects selected, you're gonna right click and go to show tracks. This now isolates the object's animation tracks in the timeline. And now what you can do is go and store them by going to bookmarks, add bookmark. Now you got it stored. To rename them, go to manage bookmarks, double click, and then just type the name. And then you can go back to all of the tracks by going to default bookmark. And then at any time, if you want to bring up those stored bookmarks, just go to the bookmark drop down menu and select that bookmark to isolate those animation tracks. And with that, you can have timelines that no longer look like a bunch of spaghetti. Now, I'm sure you already knew that HDRIs are great for realistic scene lighting, but did you know that Cinema 4D's Asset Manager has a boatload of them and that you can actually create an environment object instantly by simply dragging and dropping the HDR file into your object manager. This saves you from manually having to create the environment object and loading up the HDR file manually, which is pretty dang cool. Unfortunately, this isn't gonna help you automatically create a good render, but it gets you closer. Next up is the ultimate scene organization tool, Layers. By assigning objects or groups of objects to layers, you can solo specific items, toggle their properties like animation, and disable resource heavy effects like generators and deformers that tend to slow down your viewport. By soloing just the elements that make up the frog animation here, you can actually remove calculations from the rest of the scene that bog down the playback, and it allows me to then just solely focus on perfecting that frog's movement. So the viewport shouldn't look like a slideshow. So it's really surprising how many people, how many experienced artists I know that don't use layers. I mean, it took me a good five years before I fully embraced layers, but uh, don't be me uh, and wait, start using layers today 
it'll make Marie Kondo proud. Now, if you're digging these time-saving tips, then you're really gonna dig my courses at School of Motion, Cinema 4D Basecamp and Cinema 4D Ascent. They're not your typical, here's this button and just push these buttons to do this thing. They're jam-packed with all these really sneaky workflow hacks that'll have you working smarter, not harder in Cinema 4D. So hop on over to schoolofmotion.com forward slash courses and check them out. And unlike my terrible jokes earlier, I promise that these courses actually deliver. All right, back to the tutorial. Now this next tip is for anyone who often works with materials that need color variations. Instead of going and duplicating the material and making it a pain to then adjust all of those materials later, do this. In the material, load up a color user data node, set it to redshift display color, plug that into the color on the material. And by doing this, you can now drive the color information on the object itself by changing the display color to custom. This allows you to have one material to rule them all. And if you need to make any material adjustments, you can just do that from that single material. Pretty handy, huh? Now, did you know that you could create a preset for literally anything in Cinema 4D? It is super powerful. So here's an example real quick. Now, let's just say I have a fever and the only cure is more gobos. Setting up a gobo has multiple steps. You gotta load up a gobo texture, you gotta adjust the spread and then dial in some other settings. And I need to do this every single time I want to use a different gobo. But with presets, I can go ahead and dial in all that stuff and save it. And if I have a favorite gobo image that I like to use all the time, like blinds, that's a, that's a really go-to uh, gobo there, I can store that too. So once you're done, all you need to do is go to the top right and just go to the drop down that says save preset. And now anytime that you want to use that gobo, create an area light and then go and choose that preset in that drop down menu and it'll load it up for you. And you can do this with any primitives or deformers or really any object in Cinema 4D and load up any preset. Super powerful. Now, another time saver is creating favorites in both the asset browser and Redshift nodes. What this allows you to do is you can, if you have a favorite material or anything, you can just go and click on the heart icon in the asset browser. And then to bring up all your favorites, just go to smart search and click on favorites to see all your favorites. And then for Redshift nodes, you can just go and bring up the node commander and then just again, hit the heart there and favorite your favorite nodes. And then you can just go to your favorites and you can drag and drop in your most used nodes for that quick access. And you can hoard all the presets and favorites that you want. I'm not gonna judge you. All right, now keeping with Redshift, let's talk about speeding up your interactive preview render or IPR. Starting with Redshift 2025.1.2, the AI powered OIDN denoiser is super impressive. It delivers really fast, really smooth Redshift IPR performance. The results are like really impressive, kind of giving us that snappy viewport preview rendering that Blender users get with Eevee, not the Pokemon, the renderer. And you can even optimize things even more by bringing your progressive passes to 128 so your GPUs aren't constantly chugging and sound like they're about to lift off to Mars. So unless you're one of those people that thinks watching paint dry should be an X Games event, go ahead and uh, turn on the OIDN denoiser and render faster. Next up is one more tip to help speed up your Redshift IPR, and that is by turning on freeze tessellation and freeze geometry. This skips the sometimes and mostly often super slow loading process that normally is happening where it's recalculating geometry and tessellation every time you make even the tiniest change, even if you're just moving the camera. Now, if you turn this off, it's gonna be perfect, especially if you're just doing look dev. If you're just trying to change the camera or change lights, move lights around, it's not gonna constantly trigger that update every single time, which is super helpful. Now, here is a dare I say it, game-changing tip that can dramatically cut your render times down, and it's a very simple change. So, in your render settings, you'll find an option where you can adjust your bucket size, which controls the size of those little squares or buckets that you see going around your render at render time. And by changing their sizes, you can seriously speed things up. So in my test, I have dual 3090s with a lot of RAM. And if you bump the size of the bucket size from 128, which is the default, 
to 512, it actually slashed my render times by 22 seconds per frame on this scene. And that's about 40% faster. That is crazy town. Now, the big stipulation is that your mileage is gonna vary depending on your scene complexity and your hardware setup. For example, I have a GPU with a lot of RAM size and that is a big factor, is that GPU RAM. But it is worth experimenting with. Just taking a few minutes to do some test renders is gonna save you maybe hours in the long run. So a simple bucket size adjustment could be the rendering speed boost that you have been looking for. Who knew these little render buckets could be so powerful? So because I like you so much and I am so generous, I'm gonna give you a bonus tip for the price of Blender. Now this last tip is about making sure your fast renders actually look good when it comes to textures. So here I have an object, I got some roughness, normal maps, all these types of things. And the render doesn't actually look very well. There's like a weird seam. And this is because you need to make sure that each texture node is using the right color space. Here's something you might not have known, but if you have a color map that just holds pure color information, like a diffuse texture, you need to make sure the color space is using sRGB. But for any maps that hold any data information, so we're talking metallic, bump, normal, and displacement, you actually need to change the color space to raw format. If you don't do that, Redshift isn't gonna use that information correctly. So if I go and select all my nodes, change them to raw, wait for it, you can see that massive difference there. Now I don't wanna admit like how long I was doing this whole thing wrong, ignoring the whole color space thing. I just kind of assumed that auto just kind of did the work for you, but it doesn't. Because, you know, with AI, you think that computers are so smart, but sometimes they're kind of dumb. Nikki, what? I'm a computer. Stop all the downloading. So there you have it. 10 ways to turbocharge your Cinema 4D workflow and a bonus tip to boot. Did I miss any of your favorite tips? Let me know in the comments. I'd be really interested in your favorite tips to help speed up your own workflows. And if you found this video helpful, hit that like button, hit subscribe, ding the bell, it's all gonna help us be able to bring you more and more content and help yourself out because you're gonna get alerted anytime we come out with more content. As always, thank you so very much for watching. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go see what AI and my client's Photoshop guru nephew have cooked up together. I'm sure it's gonna be amazing.